we can see Johnny Shines and Robert Johnson. Robert Johnson's on the left. It's easy to imagine how these guys lived. Two young men travelling around on greyhound buses or jumping a freight train and playing from town to town. It was probably a wild life. Now to play this music in the same way you should bring out a bit of your own wildness. Now don't tell me that. You have a wild side. Yes you have. It's there. I know it is. Although we don't have video or film of Johnson's style, we can get a good idea by watching Johnny Shines play. In this clip, Johnny Shines is playing Sweet Home Chicago in the key of E. But we're more interested in his hands. How is holding his right hand? In this way we can get a good idea of how Robert Johnson really played because they were, they were from the same area and they travelled together. You can see he uses one finger and many many master bluesmen just use one finger. If you use two fingers it tends to pull you away from the original authentic style so it's worth thinking about. His other fingers are fastened to the soundboard 
but they move around, they're not rigidly fixed in one spot. He plays higher up the fretboard to make the, the guitar sound nice and sweet. This is a powerful technique used by many, many bluesmen, just using the one finger. Sometimes it has to move rather quickly, but if you use two fingers instead, you tend to lose that authentic feel, that authentic sound that we're looking for in our blues music. For the purposes of this video, you'll see I have my cap on the first fret, which is a habit of mine, but the guitar is tuned down to normal standard tuning. So when we look at the tablature, you can basically ignore it. Let's take a look at the introduction to me and the Devil Blues. For the start of the introduction, we're going to run down from a D7 shape right up on the 9th fret. Now normally, this might be tapped in this way. Down to the 8th, down to the 7th, before we move down to the, the long A shape. What I do is I take the D7 shape, but I start it right down where it should be on the, the second fret, and then I slide it up to the ninth. It sounds like this. At the same time, my thumb is keeping the beat, but it's not just hitting one string. It's a monotonic bass, but I'm hitting two or three strings at the same time. And immediately after I strike, I'm damping with the hand. With the palm of my hand. You have to use some control, or it sounds a bit of a mess, or it can do. Take a look at my hand in close-up. Notice how I keep my, my palm very close to the strings, just in front of the bridge there. So when I strum, I just drop the palm onto the strings. It becomes automatic after a while, and don't worry if the string buzzes here and there, or if you fluff any notes, this is the blues. Another thing we can do is to give a bit of vibrato, either by moving the fingers, or moving the guitar, or at the end of the stroke, just giving a little bend on all three strings. It sounds like this. It's quite a subtle sound, but it does tend to, to make it more alive. Have a go yourself. So we go to the rundown. And here's the tablature. Now one of the ways you can make your music more interesting for the listener is to include variations whenever you can. In that last part, we played this, but we could also play this. You can vary each time you play it, make it a little bit, little bit different every time. And now we go down from the A to the E7. And here's the tablature. And here again, we can try and make this a little different by introducing another stroke. Back from the A. 